Well, hello, scrappers. Back again. It's getting late Saturday. Normally, I try to do the video early, but went down to the transfer station and phew, that didn't work out. They, they stopped taking metal. So, that could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. <clears throat> I said I wasn't going to run the ad net for next month, but I went ahead and posted it, but I reworded it and uh, put Blanchard, Bridge Creek, and Newcastle area. That way I'm not running all over the countryside trying to get stuff. <clears throat> and I'll see how that goes. I can run some ad. I gave the guy down at the transfer station a stack of business cards. So if people come in with metal, he can give them the business cards, and then they can call me. I do have a stove I have to pick up Monday after work. And the Colorado went down on me today. When I got back from the transfer station, I dropped the trailer, started pulling out, I pushed in the clutch, and it went, and the pedal went to the floor. Heard a little pop, and it went to the floor. I'm hoping it's just a bolt came out or spring came off or something like that, just something simple. If it's major, well, it may be down for a while. I'm glad I got the three-quarter ton so I can drive it to work. And uh, I've been cleaning up these uh, ACRs, aluminum copper radiators, and uh, I'm going to get a weight on those here in a minute. I got all the noodles over here, and uh, we're looking at... Uh, 1.5 or 1 pound 5.6 ounces something like that so I'm gonna take these off I'm gonna grab these radiators set them on the scale here move this other stuff out from underneath there's nothing sitting on anything else to give us a false reading And we're looking at 12 pounds, 7.3 ounces, almost 12 and a half pounds. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do, let's see if I can grab these, put them on my hip, walk out here. <coughs> I had a viewer saying something about putting them in my melting pot and melting the aluminum off of the copper. And I thought, yeah, why not do a video on that? I've been uh, pretty well thinking about doing something like that for a while anyway. Forgive the view right now. This thing's about to hit, hit the ground. So I'm going to... I already got the jug of oil sitting there. i got to run the air hose out here yet. I might get the air nozzle and kind of blow some of that ash out of there. Clean it up a little bit before I get started. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for right now. And... Uh, and then I'll come back when I get ready to light her up. So, see you in a few minutes. Okay, I think I'm ready to start uh, putting that stuff in there. I'll try to set the camera up over here. And uh, make sure you can see what I'm doing. propane flame. Now I'll start running some air in there and we'll start the siphon for the oil. It looks like somebody started siphoning the oil. Yes, I want to say before this thing gets too loud that uh, I want to thank those that are buying the tools and equipment on my Amazon affiliate link. There was a little more money my way. Of course, I find out it's going to be two months before I see any of that. I 
I got back down on the gas the propane a little bit and giving it more air pressure, get more oil going. So you can see our pressure gauge is still down there pretty low. Kind of hear that flutter. So, okay, propane is all the way off. So I'll step over here and turn the tank off. I guess. Let me clean that out a little bit and get that muffin tin down there. Where did I throw that one? Oh. It'll take a few minutes to start melting. I usually try to close the top off, but that might be kind of hard to do. I probably should have cut all these in half where they'd sit down there lower. And I may end up having to do that. Right now, this is just an experiment. I've never done this before. Turning it up to, oh, here we go. I'll turn that down some. Looks like what it's doing is getting so hot, that copper tubing so thin, it's just melting right through that copper tubing. So I may have to uh, keep it further back from the flame. Well, I was going to mount this on the tripod, but the adapter, adapter that fits in there is on the uh, camcorder. Right now it's too windy out here for the camcorder. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work like that unless I uh, keep it back some.
Yeah, it's going to take a little experimentation. I can't run the heat as hot as I can't turn it up as hot as I normally do to melt to melt stuff. See, it kind of melted the tubing there at the bottom. Running that on about 12. We did get a few pieces here. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Might be easier to just take it to a bandsaw. Getting a little bit of aluminum down there in the bottom, but not much. Not enough to puddle or flow or anything. If I cover that up more, it'll probably work better. Keep some of this cooler out. Wind's blowing pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and just shut this down. Kind of get an idea what that's going to do anyway. Get this uh, oil back down into the jug. And what I try to do, I try to pull that out and put it someplace that's kind of elevated. Had it stuck in there for right now. Get the cap, put it back on the jug, that way it keeps contaminants out of there, rain, whatever. Yeah, my plan was to go down to the transfer station this morning and bring in a load of scrap. You can see where the Colorado died. At least it broke down right here in the yard. That's the good thing about that. It's going to break down. At least it broke down here at home. Unhitched the little trailer and pulled it out and pop. major project I've been on today move the uh, TV antenna from in front of the trailer to the back of the trailer that way I don't have the, the coax running across the floor so it's not a trip hazard for my wife I've had this 4x4 cemented in back here for oh several years so pull that antenna out of the ground and then uh, another thing I did you can see up there at the top. 
other camera I could zoom in. I'm not, I can't even see it on this monitor. But uh, up there somewhere, I got you can see that white PVC. That's a uh, part of my other hobby that I've been getting into for about the last month. There's a little no tail down there hiding. He's half tame, half wild. He doesn't really know me or my wife. It's my daughter's cat. She had him in the room for a long time. But she got a female cat in there. She came in heat, so he had to go out. So he's he's getting a little better. He's not quite as scared of me. But that GRMS antenna stands for General Mobile Radio Service. With all the craziness we've had for the last year with the coronavirus, the uh, major ice storm we had in October, and then this... Uh, other super cold spell we had, the Arctic blast as they called it, froze up all the wind generators in Texas and stuff. Person kind of needs to be a somewhat of a prepper. I'm no hardcore prepper, I don't have a, a bunker or anything like that, but we started stocking up on toilet paper and, and canned goods and stuff like that when after the coronavirus hit, and uh, we're continuing to keep a stockpile of that. That way if there's any kind of a problem with the supply chain, which even with this ship stuck in the Suez Canal over there, you know, that could delay a lot of stuff. They're saying we could have a toilet paper shortage again, so you guys may want to run out and grab a couple packs of toilet paper just to be on the safe side. I saw that on a prepping group here about a week or so ago, then I saw a headline uh, <clears throat> a couple days ago mentioned it. So part of part of my prepping decided to get emergency radios and the GMRS is General Mobile Radio Service. It's kind of a hybrid between CB and ham radio. You do have to have a license, but all you have to do is just get on the FCC website, set up an account. Uh, right now it's $70 for 10 years, but uh, if you can wait till after the 19th of this month, of April, they're supposed to drop it down to $35. And the nice thing about that is one license is good for your whole family. And that's, you know, your mom, your dad, your brothers, sisters, cousins, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, mother-in-law, father-in-law. You know, the whole family can talk on that one call sign. So I thought, well, really, that, that was a pretty good deal. And uh, I got a little handheld. They claim it's 5 watts, which actually puts out about 4.5. I put a little... $20 mobile antenna on my truck and it's sitting right here behind the trailer and uh, I set it up for a repeater because what's one thing about GMRS you can't talk through, through repeaters <clears throat> and there's a repeater up on North 38th Terrace in Lincoln and according to Google Maps as a crow flies that's about 30 and a half miles from here and with that handheld I was able to talk to a guy through that repeater and I was just amazed I could talk that far in nice crystal clear. So I figured with that antenna in there hooked to a little handheld, because I'm just setting it up right now to see what, what my possibilities are with the handheld. And uh, my wife was sitting here in the, in the kitchen, and I was about two miles north and in the mobile this morning. We could talk, and then uh, lost contact after that but now when she hooks that mo that handheld up to this antenna she'll probably be able to talk 30 40 miles of course like cb this is you know line of sight so if you get down in the valley you may lose contact but i'm kind of debating on putting up a second channel just for kind of for prepping a little bit and gmrs i probably won't be able to put out two videos a week on that for sure might be one or two videos a month. Yeah, as I kind of learn and go along on this myself. So, it's just I'll be taking the journey and I can take some people along with me. So, if I put up the channel, I'll go over, I'll tell everybody what I, whatever I decide to name it. And uh, I've always said, uh, if you live in Oklahoma, you'd need camping gear. When I lived up in the city, oh, 25 years ago or so, my wife's brother lived next door, and we had a power outage, and uh, he came over and said, hey, can I put my meat in your freezer? And I said, what for? He said, my power's out. And I said, well, so is mine. 
He said, well, how do you have lights? And I said, I have camping gear. I have lanterns. <laughs> you know, why sit in the dark if you have lanterns? But uh, one thing I did a few years back, my wife had the COPD, and she got kind of freaked out about a storm, the way they were talking about a bad storm coming in. So I got this generator, and uh, that got us through that five-day cold spell, or that real cold spell, and it got us through five days with no electric during that October ice storm. So I had to come out and fill it up with gas every five hours, but it kept us with enough electricity that uh, kept it ran the freezer, the TV, I had my modem going, which I've got a good a bat a battery backup for the computer and the modem and the router. So I got that all plugged in on a pretty much a power strip, so I was just able to plug it into the plug in I have inside for the generator. And that kept that running. I ran a drop cord into the living room kitchen area, ran a drop cord to the to the freezer, and then we had, like I said, a drop cord and a power strip over by the TV where people could hook their computers in, charge their laptops or tablets, their cell phones and whatnot. So I want to thank everybody for watching. I don't want to talk your ear off. And uh, I got to get in there and put the other end on that on that cable so I can do a SWR check, see how, how that radio and that antenna is going to work. Oh, it's supposed to be already matched for the frequency, so I should get a low SWR reading, and that low reading is good. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to hear more about prepping, uh, really, should I put up a separate prepping channel or make prepping part of this channel? Because I think it's just, you know, survival, really. Don't want to get into politics or anything like that, but our government can only do so much so fast. Like in Texas, when the, that power was out, you know, what could they do? What could the government do? You, you, people couldn't call 911. The cell towers are down, so you know, the government pretty well had to go door to door. You know, and then they have first they have to get organized and, and get out there. You know, so your first responders are going to be your police, your fire you know, paramedics and ambulance, but there's only so many, they can only cover so much. And so much of Texas, what they say, one third or one fourth of Texas was down, something like that with no power. And most people in Texas don't have a backup, backup heat. Even if you're on natural gas or propane for heat, your furnace isn't gonna work without, without electric, so. Which, part of my, I'm total electric out here, so. My backup plan, is all these propane bottles. Most of them are full. I think I got two here. I need to, maybe three here. I need to take in and get them filled up. I checked the date on them. Usually this size here, they're good for 12 years before you have to get them tested. So when they get old, I just exchange them. Uh, the store in town is about 15 bucks, so you're getting 15 pounds for $15. And then I'll take these to, if they're still in date, I'll take them to Ace and I'll get 20 pounds put in there for about 17, 18 bucks. And uh, another thing I did the other day, so I've still got a full one down here too. I got full five gallons of gas with some stable in it for the generator. Cause right now we're coming into tornado season, so, and we get some pretty strong wind, storms come through with just winds, and sometimes that'll knock out our power. Down, I got this jury can at Harbor Freight for 40 bucks, five gallons. So I'm gonna put some stable in it, and then when I go to get gas, I'll uh, put some gas in there. So I think it's got a screen there. Drop, drop everything. Well, maybe that doesn't come out. <laughs> kind of high for you know plastic gas can to work but I just wanted to have extra storage for the generator it seemed like during that five days that five gallons lasted a day and a half something like that so it wasn't too bad it took about a about a gallon each time so but I wanted a second one I may buy 
sell some scrap this year this year I may buy one or two more where they'll put stable in it and uh, that way it should keep for six months maybe a year but summertime when the tornado threats over I'll use that up in the riding mower or something this propane bottle I brought in the other day it's about full of propane and not being able to go to the transfer station that kind of changes a lot of my plans for the summer so like I said I, ran, I went ahead and posted the ad I could have set it for six months but I thought well, I'm just gonna put it in there for one month right now and try it see kind of see how it goes actually I'm not, that's gonna be kind of hard to t do because I got to actually by the temp I have to post it again so it's gonna be just a short trial period but like a woman I call right now has got a dryer she's up in bridge creek but I'm gonna hit her on the way home that way I don't really have to burn extra gas to go pick it up just pick it up on my way home just a little bit off, you know off to the side and pick it up come on home and unload it and uh, I'm gonna have to I can probably post on citizens of Blanchard post some ads on there and try to find out when large trash pickup is if they do it I know they used to do it uh, if your trash is picked up on Monday, your large trash should be the first Friday. Because they don't do Friday trash pickup. If your tr trash was Tuesday, it would be the second Tuesday or second Friday of the month and so on. Anyway, I'm rambling here. So if you guys want to, like I say, you want to know more about, have me post more about uh, prepping. I can throw a little bit of that in with the scrapping videos. Or I can go ahead and kind of devote a channel to it. Might take a while to get a thousand subscribers on that and 4,000 viewing hours, but uh, there's some other pr good prepping channels out there. Sensible Prepper, he's really good. He got a big following. So, go finish this antenna up, get this video uploaded and ready to go for in the morning. And uh, I got to get up on the roof and cut these branches back before they get too latened out with leaves, too. On the truck, I'm hoping it's just a spring popped off. That would be easy to pop back on and good, be good to go. But if not, I might be driving to three-quarter time for a little bit. And then try to get that up to Colorado over to the mechanic. The light at the end of the tunnel, though, is this is April. It's not far long till May. And then I start getting my Social Security so I can start paying off some debt. So I'm going to let you guys go. If you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate it. If you do subscribe, see a lot of my <laughs> videos. I didn't do real well on this um, meltdown, but like I can say it was an experiment. So I kind of have an idea of what I'm up against because I was kind of wondering about that too, how it would work. But I'm going to have to experiment on how much flame, how far to keep it from the flame. Because that t copper tubing and those things is pretty small, pretty thin. And I think it's just going to be, maybe be too much. I'm thinking really for if the guy wants to cut them open, really the best way is probably a bandsaw. So, anyway, I'm off of here, and we'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.